One of the questions a lot of couples struggle with in relationship is, if there has been cheating in the relationship, should you stay? Or is it time to move on down the road? And kind of the underlying question to that question is, is the old adage, once a cheater, always a cheater accurate? Or can somebody have a bad moment, a bad decision, and never repeat that thing again? That's the confusion, that's the question that I'm gonna try to answer in this video. So I wanna talk about a few things to consider if there's been cheating in a relationship to help you determine should you stay or should you go. That's today on Relation Shots. Hey, welcome to Relation Shots. My name's Eric Wooten. If this is your first time hanging out with us, welcome to the place to get practical relationship advice that actually works in your relationship. If you've not already done so, go ahead and click the subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss upcoming videos. If you want a free guide to intimacy, you'll see the link in the description area below if we can help you in any area of your relationship from dating to pre-married to marriage stuff. We'd love to walk with you in your relationship journey. You can check out uh, all the different resources in the description area below. So let's talk about cheating. And let's start with dating. And then we'll move on to marriage. So if you are dating in a dating relationship, and when I say uh, dating, I mean, in this case, what I'm saying is if you are in a committed, exclusive dating relationship, you've been with this person for a period of time, both of you are in agreement that this is an exclusive dating commitment that you've made to one another uh, to see if you can move towards marriage. If you're in that kind of relationship and cheating has occurred, I would say this is a time to really push the pause button on the relationship. This is not the time to just brush past it, forgive quickly and move on because you don't like the pain and the discomfort of trying to process what has gone on. This is not the time to do that. This is the time to hit pause, to step back and say, what is going on in the relationship? And so I would encourage you to evaluate holistically this whole relationship and do that with some trusted friends outside of yourself who are not tied in with emotion, who can actually look at the whole situation logically. Because it's one thing if the relationship is great and everything is great and there's this one time event, but if there are some consistent themes of other types of behavior that contribute to this whole thing, you probably want to evaluate that, right? If there's a consistent theme of selfishness or selfish behavior by the other person, if there's a theme of poor choices, if there's a theme of lack of boundaries, if there's a theme of lack of consideration for you, if there's a theme of hanging out with unhealthy people, then what I'm guessing is, although we're looking at cheating, there's probably some unhealthy behaviors that are going on in a relationship, and although this may be a one-time cheating event so far, I would say if we look holistically and a lot of those other behaviors are existing, this may be just a sign of things to come in a relationship. So if you're dating and infidelity happens in a relationship, don't just forgive quick, don't just brush over it, don't just move past it because we don't like the pain of it. Don't, don't go along with, well, you know, I just made a mistake and I'll make sure it never happens again. Don't go along with, well, I was drinking and I made a bad decision. Pause. Evaluate the whole relationship with people who care about you, who you can trust their judgment. This may be just, <laughs> just the tip of the iceberg for you, and this may be a moment to put the brakes on and go, listen, I've been overlooking some other stuff too, and this is generally not a healthy relationship. If you're married, then I wanna handle this a little bit different. Our commitment level is different, and so I think we wanna follow some of the same things, which is hold up. Let's stop, let's evaluate, let's not just brush past this and act like it's great and everything's good. Uh, but I just wanna give you four thoughts to consider if you're married and cheating has happened in the relationship. Thought number one is involve community, period. If you've watched any of my videos, you already know, I believe the number one key to success for couples is the presence of an authentic community in the couple's lives. When there's been cheating, you absolutely will need community to walk with you through it on both sides. This is not the time to go into privacy and protection mode and not tell anybody and trying to protect our pride in the situation on both sides. We don't want anybody to know that the person who cheated 
cheated because they'll look at them different. We feel dumb on the other side because it's like, well, I can't believe they cheated on me and that makes me look bad. And this is not the time to go into privacy and protection mode. This is the time to surround yourself with good, healthy people who can walk with you through this situation. And both of you are going to need it. With all the hurt, with all the anger, with all the frustration, you're going to need some people who have some wisdom to help guide you through the process of healing, of forgiving, of possibly rebuilding and restoration, and both of you are going to need it. The offender and the hurt spouse are both going to need people walking with them in the situation. If you do not have that community, then you need to reach out to a professional counselor who knows what they're doing, who can help you walk through this. Now, when I say community, I don't mean you go tell everybody because not everybody can help you. And if you try to tell people things who can't be part of the solution, they end up being more a part of the problem because they don't know what to do with it. So they go, they go tell people and then there's gossip flying all over the place. So you need to tell the right people. But what I'm saying is you have to have community. And if the offending spouse is not interested in getting outside help, I promise you it's going to be real hard for you to properly heal forgive, rebuild, and get to a better place if you don't have that. So that's thought number one is get some good community around you. Thought number two is just take your time. Listen, don't make a rash decision either to stay or to leave. Now, when I'm working with couples, I'll often, I'll often tell the hurt spouse, listen, you actually do have the choice and the power and control to leave if you want. Oftentimes they feel trapped and I can't believe this. Listen, you can walk out the door tomorrow if you want. I'm not saying that's the right thing to do, but you do need to know that you have some power to either choose to stay or choose to leave. All I'm saying is take your time. Don't make a rash decision. Our anger and our hurt can cause us to make some really bad decisions because we're reacting purely out of emotion. So you need to take some time. You need to process this. Healing, grieving, that stuff all takes time. Do not be in a rush to make a final decision. Now, you may have to make some smaller decisions if you feel like you need to separate for a time or there's some other stuff you need to do, but you don't need to make a final decision on whether you're staying or whether you're going right in the beginning. It's going to take some time to uncover details, to have conversations, to get the info you need, uh, to grieve properly, to heal personally, to have conversations with other people. It's going to take some time, so do not rush anything. Take your time. Thought number three is uncover the meaning of the affair. Now, all affairs are not equal. So part of the process of healing and understanding and trying to move forward is understanding how we got here. What is behind the affair? What is the meaning? What, why did this person step out? And we want to take some time to evaluate that because we need to understand that in order to heal and forgive properly. So we need to look at the dynamics of the relationship. Is there disconnection in the relationship? Uh, we, need, we need to look at the, the whole climate of your communication. Are we not communicating well? And again, I'm not saying this to put blame on the relationship because the blame is 100% on the person who did it, but we have to evaluate how we got there. Did this person lack some boundaries? Uh, is this person dealing with some personal stuff that they've never dealt with. Maybe they have a need for affirmation. They have a need for outside attention. Maybe they have a sexual addiction or, or a substance abuse issue. But we have to take some time to really talk about how we got here before we're going to understand how we can get out of here. And if we don't have any meeting, if we don't understand how we got here, if we, we can't uh, figure out what the contributing factors were to this person stepping out, we have little hope that it may not happen again, right? If I sit here and go, I, I just don't know how I got it. I don't know what happened. I don't, well, that doesn't give the other person a whole lot of hope to say you can actually make the adjustment so we can agree that this will not happen and we can have hope and some confidence this will not happen again down the road because part of the healing process is believing and hoping that we're not going to be in the same place of pain again down the road. And in order to do that, you need to understand the meaning behind what's going on. And thought number four is just to ask or evaluate, is there true repentance and remorse on the part of the offender? Does the offender realize the pain and hurt that they have caused their spouse? 
do they care about what they part part of healing from an affair is for the offender to really almost be able to feel the pain that they have caused in their spouse and oftentimes that gets lost because they're being met with anger or criticism or accusation and so they just get defensive and there's not a chance to really sit down and feel the other person's pain but we've got to understand that this person has sorrow around what they did that they're truly willing to make the changes necessary that's part of the repentance piece so i can say sorry all day long but true remorse is not only am i sorry not only am i concerned about how my behaviors have impacted my spouse but I'm willing to do the things that are necessary to be done. Am I willing to cut off contact with the other person? Am I willing to adjust my lifestyle or make some behavior changes uh, to help build trust and to make sure I don't get in this situation again? If you're dealing with somebody who's unwilling to cut it off, who's unwilling to apologize, who's unwilling to accept 100% responsibility for it, uh, it's probably going to be pretty tough to stay in a relationship with somebody who is not taking ownership for what they did and have a willingness to make the adjustments, whatever they are, in order to rebuild trust and rebuild the relationship. So if you're dealing with somebody who is unwilling to take 100% responsibility and ownership and apologize and willing to make some adjustments in their behavior and their lifestyle in order to be 100% transparent, in order to communicate honestly 100% of the time, it's going to be real hard to rebuild that relationship and stay in that relationship. So there's four thoughts to consider when there's been cheating in a relationship of should I stay or should I go? I would say start with evaluating some of these areas. And if you feel like the other person is unwilling to do some of the stuff we've talked about, it's probably going to be pretty tough to stay in the relationship. If they are, then I've worked with many couples. There's a phenomenal chance that not only can you work through it, but you can have a fantastic and oftentimes better marriage after it than you had prior to the pain. Not that anybody wants to go through the pain to get that, uh, but you can often rebuild a brand new marriage that is satisfying for both of you. So those are four thoughts. I'd love to hear your thoughts on how you would decide or how you have decided if you should stay or if you should go when there's been cheating in a relationship. Drop a comment in the comment section below. If we can walk with you in your relationship, if you're a married couple, our marriage membership is a community with tons of people who have dealt with this, who can walk alongside you, who can offer encouragement and ideas and tools and tips on how you can get through something as difficult as, a, as an affair. So check out the link in the description area below. Become a part of our marriage membership. And until next time, I'll see you right back here on Relationships.